While hordes of holidaymakers turn up at the airport to fly out of the UK, those flying in on diverted Gatwick flights are heading to immigration, which takes around a 10-minute walk. Please make sure, ladies and gentlemen, if you do not have your glasses on in your photograph, then remove any glasses you're wearing. You then have to clear passport control. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. You're very welcome. If there's any doubt about the authenticity of your entry documents... Your identity card is not very good. ..you may then come face to face with Border Force Bob. I've travel many years here. OK. I'm mainly uh, immigration trained, so I'm a forgery officer. Every different country has their own set of security features. We need to learn the most important ones. And we also need to look at people, because the biggest problem we have is imposters. Thank you. Sierra Toothpick, go ahead. Can you come to the watch house for the details of a medical emergency, please? <laughs> But Border Force Bob won't be providing any first aid. He's there on official business. If a passenger is unwell and has to be removed from the airport, because they're actually airside, we have to check their document, make sure that everything's right. So we have to take everything with us so we can deal with a passenger away from the immigration control. If the passenger can't get to the border, then the border will be brought to them. Luckily, we're only going to go to 226, so it isn't too far away. Terminal 2 is the smallest of the four terminals at Heathrow, measuring at a mere 40,000 square metres. That's the equivalent of 205 tennis courts. I've been here since the day it started. In actual fact, I was one of the people who worked on fitting out this building for Border Force to use. Bob helped open this terminal in 2014. Oh, this isn't the right area. I need to be upstairs. All this is a pain in the arse. Sorry. But even he occasionally loses his bearings. We should be upstairs. This should be up another level. Oh, come on, Bob. Think, think, think. <laughs> 15 minutes later, Bob finally reaches the gate. Hello, Chuck. What, what we got? The paramedic is already on site, but what the poorly passenger may actually need is a strong cup of coffee. Right, we do have an intoxicated passenger who's refusing to leave the flight, so the police are coming on the road. OK. He does have an ID card, so he's a European. This flight arriving from Oslo was due to return there 45 minutes ago. But with the passenger refusing to leave, no one can board the plane until the police arrive. It's amazing how much the impact is and how quick it is when you've got an airport like Heathrow that's 98% full with the number of aircraft that it deals with. This aircraft has already probably missed its departure slot, so the whole flight could end up being cancelled just because one person has had too much to drink. I think the, the rule is 10% of the passengers cause 90% of the problem. Thank you very much. While everyone waits, cabin crew provide Bob with the documents he needs. All the features I would expect to see on a passport from his country is there, so I'm happy that that passport is as it was issued. I haven't been able to see the passenger, and I need to do that as well to confirm everything. Police are there. They'll deal with him. They'll let us know what they want to do with him. Being drunk on a plane is a criminal offence. So whilst other passengers face delays, this passenger could be facing a sentence of up to two years. Yeah, hi, is that control? Yeah, our passenger is intoxicated and now refuses to leave the aircraft. At gate 226, an intoxicated passenger is still refusing to leave the plane. He'll either exit the airport in the normal way through immigration control with police officers in escort, or they may decide, because of his tendencies, that they want to put him in and take him out of the airport in the back of the van. And keeping a close eye on his passport is Border Force Bob. Passenger is being escorted through the control by police. Would you, would you like a chair? Are you happy to walk? Happy to walk. Be careful, then. You want to give him some room. OK, watch, out, watch yourself. The chair's there if you want it. Which would be easier, no? Come on, walk. Come on, then. 
With good manners such as these, he will exit the terminal the way all arrivals do, through the immigration hall. When I got there, he was like really incoherent. So I said to him, Have you been drinking and everything? He went, No, 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 only one beer. That's it, you're there. If that's yeah, one beer, I'm. It's the one, you're one, you're Thank God it's no good to me, I almost have. It's the only one, you're right. <laughs> do, do you like a drink? A drink, yes. A lot of drink, no. I've seen myself, I'm, uh, I've seen myself when I've been. Uh, Intoxicated, it's not a good look. Never was. The Scandinavian passenger is in the UK for a doctor's appointment and is being met in arrivals by a medical chaperone. He's a neck and back patient. Neck and back. He probably took some tablets. Yeah. Have you taken tablets again? No, is it? Is it? Some painkillers and then alcohol. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Two beers. Yeah. yeah. That's it. And some Jägermeister. Because the passenger suffers from neck and back problems, he's on strong painkillers, and the combination of medication, alcohol, and 35,000 feet is causing some unusual side effects. Oh, I love... Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Don't say you love me. I can't say I love you. <laughs> this amorous traveller is now free to leave the airport and attend his doctor's appointment.